speak um, to the point that you can't really make the plays that you'd want to. In any case, that's the typing that we're going to be going for here. And we're starting off strong with very powerful leads coming up for both teams. We're going to have the uh, Ice Rider and Incineroar leading for Steven, whereas we're going to see Maridon and Farigaraf coming out for James. And uh, seems that we're definitely going to see some people coming out swinging in this first turn for both teams. Yeah, I think Trick Room, trying to play Trick Room into Ice Rider is very difficult. Ice Rider wants Trick Room for itself, so you have to hope that your Blood Moon Ursa Luna is actually slower than it. If it's not slower, you're going to be taking those really strong Glacial Lance attacks for super effective damage. Ogre Pond is actually really good here because of that Rock Typing. It is a great counter into Calyrex. If it can Terra and get into that Rock type, it won't it won't take super effective damage from that Glacial Lance. So I wouldn't be shocked if that's why you see Ogre Pond Rock more now. Yeah, we'll that's... see what gets played here. Maridon in an interesting position. It wants to get off that damage fast, but it also doesn't want to be stuck in Trick Room. We're gonna see Calyrex the protect. Going for the protect yeah. going to eat some damage this turn. It's gonna make sure it's just gonna keep itself nice and cozy. Volt Switch is gonna be the first play, and that's oh. gonna be a significant amount of damage onto the Incineroar. It's basically out of the game at this point with all the uh, spread and just chip damage that can be done here. We're gonna see the Ursa Luna switch back in. This Ursa Luna is gonna really have one real play to make. It's probably gonna be the parting shot into uh, switch out. Yep, onto the Ursa Luna, which should have been a Maridon. Unfortunately, it's gonna be an Ursa Luna now. But Ursa Luna, even while debuffed, is still a very potent hitter with that Ferrograph, especially next to him. I like this setup, actually. It's a very simple lead. Lead with one of your strongest Pokemon, but it's also one of your fastest. So unless you're getting faked out, you can get a Volt Switch and then switch into your real switch. It, like, uh, you're switching to your real lead, which is Ursa Luna Ferrograph. And yeah. it's done pretty safely, too, while doing a significant amount of damage and forcing your opponent probably to make some switches in the meantime. A really smart play coming out from James. As we see that rain go up, there's the foul play into the protect. So no trick room going up, which is honestly probably better for that Blood Moon Ursulina, as I think Blood Moon is actually just a bit faster than Calyrex. Mm -hmm. So we'll see that foul play go up, really trying to knock out that Calyrex. That Calyrex is the biggest threat on the field right now. I wouldn't be shocked if we see it switch out. Really, that Pelipper can't wide guard, so we'll probably hit for a really powerful Hurricane or a Weather Ball into something here, and probably into that Ursulina and try and really damage that Ursulina, knock it down and try and just remove it as an option. We see the Terra Normal here coming out on Ursa Luna. Yeah, you're definitely right on that. It's gonna be even more potent hitter. Again, it has been affected by Parting Shot, but once again, this Pokemon is so very potent with its strikes. Weather Ball is gonna come out, so it's not gonna be super effective thanks to that Terrastalization, but oh. it's still gonna be huge. You don't wanna underestimate the damage that Pelipper can do, but the Blood Moon in Retaliation, likewise, you can't make the same underestimation. Of course, not gonna do as much damage, and of course, it's not gonna get the KO, but it knocks itself out. It knocks itself I out. I'm sorry, process. Pelipper, I doubted your power. <laughs> wow, that is a... I'm shocked that Weather Ball did that much damage. But wow, I really underestimated the true power of Pelipper. I am looking, it's got a special, it's got a crazy high special attack stat. The most important part of that play, however, is the fact that he's able to get the Calyrex off of it. Of course, you lost your blood, your, your Ursula in the Blood Moon, but you're fine with that because you got him a ride on sitting in the back, which is now sitting in the front seat. Yeah. It's, it is Friday, but it knows exactly where, what seat it wants to take. And uh, it's going to be coming out now and just get ready for the action. It's going to be facing down a Raging Bolt and while, uh, you know, the dragon matchup is scary for both dragons involved, it's going to be significantly faster. It's going to be able to get the Draco Major off before. And tell me, Eric, is it running Protect? No, it is not, is Raging it? Bolt is not running Protect, and it is, it is not a Terra Fair Raging Bolt. So it will take this Draco Meteor to the face, either as super effective damage or just neutral damage, which still, even a neutral damage hit from a, from a Maridon, it's going to be a lot of damage. Plus, you still have... You still have the Phorygraph up there, which is not a Pokemon you should underestimate. It will still hit it, pretty hard. It was able to take out the Calyrex with just Foul Play. Yeah. One thing that's important to note, though, is this Raging Bolt is running the Assault Fest. So while it's still going to be doing a lot of damage, it actually might be able to withstand whatever's going to come out. It is still going to Terrastalize into the Electric Typing, just to make sure that whatever it is going to swing back with. Because again, I would be surprised if Maridon takes it out, but the speed on Phorygraph is also notoriously low, so it's probably going to act Oh, the it. Helping Hand. 
Oh. Helping hand Draco Meteor does this to not it's not super, It is just neutral damage. It is enough. Folks, you cannot underestimate the power of Maridon here. As Maridon is a Pokemon that was underlooked by so many of the pro players going into regionals uh, in Indiana regionals. People underlooked Maridon. And Maridon went on and won. So Maridon is not a Pokemon underlooked for Regraph. It took that Weather Ball better than the uh, Ursaluda did. Yeah, I mean, Regraph is a tankier Pokemon than Ursaluda, but still, that Weather Ball does so much damage. Uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised here if we just see the Maridon, maybe just do an Electric type, or actually, no, it's running Specs, so just Draco Meteor once again into the uh, Pelipper. Furagath cleans up the Incineroar. It does have Fake Out, however, so you could see some play, but do you really want to... Actually, I think you do want to switch out your Maridon, maybe. Yeah, just to I think get the, being uh, locked into two... You're minus two for Draco Meteor now. You can probably switch out and save it for the end game and probably be in a great position. Yeah. You don't... You know that Pel Pelipper is the only Pokemon left, you could just get some chip damage off with your Incineroar before you take your Maridon back in. It's the fastest Pokemon, hands down. It's super effective into the only real remaining threat. Incineroar has no HP to work with, but he's going to switch out his Furgaraph instead and leave the Maridon in. Interesting play. Uh, I think he's just going to try to get the Intimidation. Um, so whatever Incineroar wants to do, it's probably going to be less effective. He's not going to be able to use... Oh, in fact, just Draco Meteor to get him right out of the game. Um, so he's going to be taking significant damage from yeah. uh, Weather Ball, which I'm assuming is going to come out. But, oh, actually it's going to be the third hurricane, hurricane into the Incineroar. Not That's enough. Not Gets the confusion, though. Mm. That's not great. That confusion can be dangerous. Now now you switch out. Switch out the Maridon. Try and get the fake out. Hopefully don't hit yourself <laughs> confusion. That would be not great. I, well, this is ultimately the play he ended up wanting to make. He just wanted to get the Incineroar in while allowing his Maridon to get the KO, switch it out so it gets its special attack back, force Pelipper to deal with two Pokemon in a 2v1 situation for maybe one to two turns before you still, even if you lose w uh, one of those Pokemon, you just have a Maridon coming back in to so just knock it yeah. out instantly, right? So it's a uh, choice specs Maridon hitting a uh, water flying type with an electric move. Incineroar so. actually does hurt itself in confusion. Pelipper is going to weather ball. Take it out for sure. Gonna say goodbye to Incineroar. Yeah, that's going to be a uh, knockout. But now Maridon comes back in for free. It will still have electric terrain up. The rain's gone away, so there goes that weather ball. Electric terrain goes away, but Maridon's going to come back out and just set it back up again. I think this might be it. Very our first match is going to go to James here. Yeah, very much seeming to be the case. Especially with that electric terrain. This is this is kind of overkill. We're going to see that HP bar move very quickly in yeah. the opposite direction. And, and there's the Electric Drift. So it will do double the amount of damage because it's a super effective move. I mean, this Pelipper does have Choice Scarf, but that's going to drop to zero real quick. Oh, yeah. Focus, focus Sash is going to keep it up. <laughs> Impressive that that little band was able to withstand so much damage. But, of course, for Rig Raff. Uh, there's the Hurricane. Oh, it's going to get KO. Takes out Rig Raff. Unless a, a miracle really occurs here, it's still going to be the game in favor of James. But really just playing it super safe to the point where he wanted to just guarantee the victory. And yeah. that's where we're going to see it come out now with that last move, Electro Drift, taking out the Pelipper, sticking it out to the end. And that's going to be James taking out game one. I guess the only way that could have won would be if that Electro Drift missed, which I don't think, I'm pretty sure it's 100% accuracy. Um, and then... Hurricane, confusing, and then it confuses itself. It hits itself repeatedly until it... Yeah, loses. it was going to be a hard road back there for Steven, but I think he has a lot of things he can do to swing this game back into his favor. It is far from over in this, oh, for in sure. this game. Yeah, and that, that was it just because of that game itself, right? The momentum shift into the Maridon, getting the Ursaluna to be able to take down the Calyrex with the um, Fairgraph play. That alone, I think, kind of set the game into James's favor there. But if history doesn't repeat itself, this one is still definitely anybody's game. Um, Steven could even just change his lead a little bit and put himself at a much better advantage, or even just keep it exactly the same and just play with that in mind. The plays that he was going to try to go for um, with that Volt Switch into the uh, foul play, just protect, right? There's a lot of things you can do differently going into your next game, whether or not we're going to see those plays coming out. We'll have to wait and see. Other Pokemon he could consider bringing out that might work a little bit better in this matchup. Um, I mean, Incineroar... I really don't know if it's actually bringing that much value as a con as a as a 
controversial as that might be to say, yeah. because part of like you're playing into a Maridon, it has Volt Switch, mm -hmm. um, Ursaluna, it's going to be doing stuff for like one turn anyways it yeah. parting shotted and it still didn't really matter because it's just such a powerful pokemon with the terrestrialization with the blood moon with frigorap helping hand as all those things you got to worry about so you're not getting much value out of uh, intimidate you're not getting much value out of uh fake out you're not even getting i don't think we even saw fake out you're not getting much value out of parting shot i wouldn't be surprised if we actually see the uh, incineroar getting switched out here i could be wrong though yeah and i doubt we see amoongus amoongus like mm -hmm. that electric terrain just blocks sleep so amoongus really just isn't useful here so i would be shocked if we see Urshifu Rapid Strike come back instead of Incineroar because as much as Incineroar is great you need some and you need something to deal with Ursa Luna you need something to deal with Fergaraf here mm -hmm. and as much as I doubted Pelipper's pal power Pelipper is doing an incredible job here yeah one shot sure. that Ursa that Blood Moon Ursa Luna I did not think was possible but it did <laughs> it and I think Pelipper will come back as much as it does it's got wide guard there's not much it can wide guard against yeah, it's just one less move, unfortunately. If you knew the matchup beforehand, you could have switched it to be something else, but you'd rather have it, not need it, than need it, not have it. But we're going to start things We out. are seeing Amoongus. I am shocked that Amoongus is coming out Very here as Electric Terrain blocks sleep. But maybe there's a good chance that Steven's seeing something that I don't. That is a very good see thing. See what happens. The Rocky Helmet even not going to have much value. Like, there is, has there been any contact at all? I don't think so. so. No, James is running a very special attack heavy team. Exactly. I mean, he's really only his physical attacker is Ogre Pond, and we don't know if he's got Ogre Pond with him. Oh, that is, I didn't even think about the Ogre Pond. But, I mean, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And he won the last game, right? He's just sticking through with his current strategy, making it work. We're most likely going to see that Volt Switch come out once again. It's faster than both Pokemon. So even if you get slept, what item is that Ursuline holding? It's Life Orb. You do have... Okay, nobody's holding on to the safety goggles, so you can't really make a hard call out there. But There's the Rage Powder. Yeah, that is at least going to afford Calyrex a turn to actually get to play the game. Yeah. Which it didn't have last time. Uh, so even if you get that uh, takedown coming out from the uh, the Ferrigarath and you're able to take down the uh, Amoongus, at least your Calyrex gets one solid turn of gameplay <laughs> before it gets yeah, completely Yeah, we see wiped. Ursuna in the back here. We see Incineroar in the back here. Incineroar is going to come out. I think it's a great option. Mm. Ice Rider Calyrex does have that... Uh, clear amulet on it, so it won't be affected by Intimidate. And it's Incineroar, not run, it might run, it actually doesn't have Parting Shot either. This is a very interesting Incineroar set. There's the high, high horsepower, Incineroar eats it up. Hmm, fake out. Oh, I mean, U-turn I think just might be a more, s mm, this is just so many hard decisions to make. Yeah, it's a really hard choice here. Uh, I mean, yeah. Either way, this I'm pretty confident this Amoongus is going to go down before it gets to do too much. You actually could see the switch. It does have Regenerator, so you benefit off of those switches. None of these Pokemon really threatened a single hit KO. So you could switch into something a little bit... Uh, uh, then what do you switch into? I guess Raging Bolt, but do you really want to take that much? Yeah, sure. we don't know what's on the other side of the field here, which so it's hard to say what the switch is. you got to make a choice with Incineroar here going to go for that, I think, Flare Blitz into Ice Rider, which honestly, oh, no, into the Amoongus, get rid of the Amoongus. Honestly, I don't disagree with that option. Taking it out. I mean, realistically, there isn't much of an option other than the Raging Bolt for Steven to have taken into this game, so I'm not going to be surprised if that is going to And the foul play see. does almost have to Calyrex. Calyrex gets at the Trick Room. He's so it is now the fastest thing on the field. That is something to be scared of. It's got that Glacial Lance. Mm -hmm. What other slow Pokemon could he have brought out here today? Uh, I mean, Amoongus, really, the only other slow Pokemon here. Uh, everything else is relatively fast, so... Yeah, I think Calyrex is the slowest thing available right now, so we'll see what can happen. Again, both these players are fighting for a spot in top cut. They're both 2-1 and one right now. So we are looking at a 3-1 top cut. There will be a chance to bubble in, but you don't want to leave your fate to how other people are doing. So these players need to win this match. Guarantee them a spot electric, in top four. Electric Terrain is still up. So this Raging Bolt is actually going to be slightly more potent than it otherwise might have been. I don't know how big of a fact this is going to be. This is Cinderor living on a thread, as well as the fact that uh, Ferrigarath is still pretty tanky, I think. 
what we could see coming out, Incineroar is actually slower, which means it's faster than the Raging Bolt. It could get a parting shot off into... Uh, what else is he running here? Did he take uh, Ursaluna or did he take something else this time around? I wouldn't be surprised if we, we see part shot. I'm pretty sure Ursaluna is in the back here, yeah. so we'll see that switch to Ursaluna. I would like to see something like that. A parting shot into Ursaluna onto the Calyrex potentially. Or maybe I think it actually does make more sense to put that onto the Raging Bolt. Um, Calyrex is a little bit less threatening right now, but. Seeing a Terra Grass Calyrex, I don't disagree with this. Okay. You yep. probably they probably weren't expecting a Flare Blitz into the Calyrex, and now you've also blocked out Moridon for dealing a ton of damage in the future. We are going to see the Double Terra here, actually. This is quite interesting. Don't Terra on Ferrigraph? Yeah. Terra on the Ferrigraph. We are going to Terra, Terra Ground Ferrigraph. Okay. So that means it's, it does oh, have it's Terra, got Terra Blast. Well. So it could just be a huge threat to the uh, Raging Bolt. The one There's Glacial Lance. Yeah, and Cinderor's gone now. But... Ferrograph still holding on, much slower than the Raging Bolt, so it's going to act first. It might even be able to knock it out. I wouldn't actually know. That's a little That's a little too much. I don't think it's going to knock it out. Um, just based off of the... Oh, the Raging Bolt is actually slower and gets oh. rid of the Ferrograph. 195. That terror was an interesting move there. This is a 97. Is it holding a... I'm not sure how it's... Oh, oh, interesting. Okay, that's why. But in any case, we're going to see that Fergraph go down. Ursaluna coming out next. And like you said, you're playing for a lot of points now. If you can make it to the top cut, you don't want to have to do it on a hope and a chance that the um, opponents are playing any worse, right? Yeah. So you want to... Oh, that's a surrender? Coming out for James, I believe. Uh, but still, a very hard-fought game from both competitors. And, yeah, I uh, think I think the plus, plus one Glacial Lance would just knock out both Pokemon. Yeah, So probably. I don't agree with the Surrender here. Get your mind back into the game and move forward into a Game 3 scenario here. Yeah, I mean, it, the the Calyrex actually getting that Trick Room off really kind of set... It was like playing Parish Song, you know? It, yeah. it really just set in motion the <laughs> beginning of the end. Getting that Chilling Nay as well makes Glacial Lance so much more of a threatening move. You really don't want to have to worry about taking that. Your Maridon, definitely not much of a physical or um, any kind of tank at all. So no. it wouldn't really have had much of a chance to withstand all of those moves coming out. Yeah, and I'm looking at our pairings here, and we have four people that are two and one, and we have one p and two people that are two or three and zero. Oh. So that means that to get into top four, you have to win this game. So this is a lot on the line. Mm -hmm. To make that top four cut, one of these p players are gonna have to win, and they will move on to our top four. So we'll see what happens. I mean, it's been a close game. It was a great comeback by Steven there. As much as maybe Amugas didn't do anything, it slowed things down. It wasted a lot of turns by just existing and forcing. James to go and attack it instead of worrying about the other threats on the field and let those other threats do stuff and get ready. So we'll have to see if James adapts now. Now, how does he come back? And knowing that, okay, well, I didn't think about Amoongus, but Amoongus was there and I had mm -hmm. to focus on it and then everything else got set up around it. Maybe the Ogre Pond, the, actually the rock typing might be pretty viable as an offensive type there's not a, we mentioned that the defensive typing for a rock is pretty weak like it takes a lot of threats from a lot of the offensive typings popular in the format but in this game the only real one you got to worry about is the developer with yeah. that uh you know weather ball uh, that's like a water type move you got to worry about everything else i think is more or less neutral um so you could actually get away with some pretty threatening attacks coming out from the Ogre Pond. That's if he decided to go for it, but the same lead as before. Maridon, Ferragaraf, he's confident he's going to be able to play this one to the best of its abilities. You're not going to have to worry about any kind of fake outs, anything like that to start things off. Wide Guard, not going to play any factor here. It's just straight up mind games, no real gimmicks that you have to worry about in this first turn. Just a hard read on your opponent. What do you think they're going to go for? Yeah, what I, I honestly Honestly, as weird as it is, Discharge isn't a horrible option, but I think James is, it looks like James is predicting a switch out on the Urshifu, so he's going to go for that Drake or Meteor, hopefully switching into the Raging Bolt. If he makes this read correctly, that would be a huge read and a huge momentum switch. On the other side of things, though, if it's not 
That is the Scarfed Urshifu is with the Surging Strikes could take out the Moranum, but it's actually going to go for the Ferrigraph. A follow-up is most likely coming out from the um, Pelipper to take out the Ferrigraph. So, sure, you get your Draco Meteor off onto the Urshifu, but now you're forced to switch it out, basically, if you want to yeah. have any impact with it. But, okay, you know, I kind of forgot that Draco Meteor is kind of a strong move, oh, yeah, so it is going to knock it out. <laughs> I, I am shocked that Steven didn't make one switch. He really read and went, I don't think you're going to click Discharge and made that read correctly mm. because if you see discharge and you've got two electric type pokemon or two water type pokemon in front of you you would probably make a switch but he didn't make the switch and now he knocks out you you trade ursaluna or you trade urshifu for freegraph and freegraph was a big opponent in james winning that game so now what does he do how does he come back here I feel like you can't go wrong taking out the Incineroar. You're gonna be sending it right into the face of a Calyrex, which is exactly where it wants to be, actually, threatening those fire moves. Um, of course, there isn't gonna be any redirection shenanigans. This nope. one is running Protect, however, so you gotta be careful with what you're gonna be going for in your next turn. You could try to be cute here and try to go for something a little bit uh, more interesting. I am surprised to see that. I figured if he was going to switch, he'd do it off of a Volt switch. But, but he's, he's choice back. He's, cho he's oh, locked into right, Draco right. Meteor. The an other annoying thing about Pelipper being out here, that Flare Blitz is going to do a lot less damage. Exactly, because of that rain, that, that true. Flare Blitz is going to be reduced in power, so it huge. probably doesn't even come close to knocking out Glass Share. Ursaluna is going to come out. My guess is we probably say goodbye to Ursaluna here. It's mm. going to take a very powerful attack. There's the Terra. Onto the Incineroar. Terra Incineroar, sure. so we are getting into a ghost or grass type Incineroar. Mm. If, if, if Glacial Lance. Ice Rider, yeah, if Ice Rider hits it's both Glacial Lance, that's probably it for both of these two Pokemon. So, you sure you tank the Weather Ball a little bit more, but now you just better really hope you don't see that Glacial Lance coming out. U turn's gonna bring back out the Maridon. You want that back out as fast as possible to have any chance of causing any issues for this Calyrex, but still got one turn to work with here. I actually wouldn't be surprised if we see the Trick Room just to really cement the uh, the advantage he has. And There's there the it room. is. This is looking brutal right now. It could be difficult, but it's not impossible. A Maridon, a very powerful Pokemon, but with no... Well, I mean, you still could switch in the Incineroar, I guess, if you want to make sure your Maridon survives here, but then you're kind of just burning out the turns. You don't really have any damage on this Calyrex yet. You want to at least get something here, but you wouldn't even have a chance to hit anything before your Maridon goes down, so I don't really see the sense of doing anything other than trying to get the switch and hope for something here, but then again, that's exactly what your opponent's predicting you do. Maybe yeah. you can get away with something, right? You gotta start finding a way to burn turns here. You actually wanna get rid of rain. You wanna get rid of Trick Room. How do you burn moves? You're gonna hit that Blood Moon into the Calyrex and switch back in Incineroar, try and get that Maridon out of danger so it can maybe come back in later if it's still alive. Incineroar oh. comes back out here. Incineroar with the fake out pressure. One thing. Stall another set of turns. Oh. Okay, I was going to say, I forgot Glacial Lance is physical, but it has a clear amulet, so it's not going to be affected by Intimidate, and it's going to be Blood Moon lives. massive. Blood Moon is still in this, however, but Chilling Nay basically promises that Maridon's going down if he takes one of those Glacial Yeah. But we'll have to see. Maybe there's some chance. Here's the Blood Moon. Blood something. Moon has to get the knockout. But it's going it to knock itself not. out with the Life Orb. Yeah, and it knocks itself out due to Life Orb. Oof, that is brutal. Maybe Witness. there's something, but I think that might be it, folks. Yeah, I mean, maybe a huge discharge, but again, it's just, you'd have to survive the Glacial Lands, which yeah. I don't think you can, especially now that it's single target damage instead of spread. It's... Might as well run it, might as well see. Yeah, run the calculations. Run the calculations. Okay. No. No, <laughs> no well, calculations. Folks, moving on into your top four cut, I believe is Steven. Taking that two to one after losing the first thing, comes back and makes some incredible plays and wins that set there. An incredible battle, honestly. Um, this is one of the this is one of the more VGC battles we've seen today for sure. So fast, no room for error, and it came down to a couple of critical turns where your previous one set you up for it. And whether or not that was a good thing for you, 
you just got to make the most of the situation that you're in every turn that you're in. Um, ultimately, of course, Steven Stark just really lining up those dominoes to always fall in his favor. And it really paid off there. I wasn't very, I didn't have a lot of confidence in those, uh, in that trick room play the first time. But once I saw the fact that it basically means Maridon is no longer a threat at all because it's so fast. Yeah. It now, and it's so weak that it now does nothing. It basically, trick room basically KOs. Uh, I mean, this Maridon is why Calyrex is so strong. In both forms, this Ice Rider form that's slower but is bulkier and can hit a lot harder is incredible. And we'll have to see if Steven can make that top two and make it to finals to win our first day one. Mm -hmm. but so I believe our finals would be R10, Zen will be, or Zane will be there, who we saw last round. We do know that Steven is in our top four, and we are looking for a top four between Rowan and Eric. Between Rowan and someone else be interesting to see what happens here <laughs> oh rowan is all oh this gets really interesting i miss rowan at two and one yeah rowan at two and one nick is at two and one there are a lot of people that could take this top spot and i'm excited really? to see what happens yeah there's a lot of battling that's gonna have to go outside of the uh the stream right now they're gonna have to really put their blood sweat and tears into making sure they can make it into that top cut but like we've just been kind of discussing this whole time is brutal it's brutal out there and yeah. it comes down to just a couple of choices in a single turn that could completely turn things around for you whether or not you get to make it into the top cut or not but shortly enough ladies and gentlemen we're gonna have your top cut ready for you as we get things going into the finals for today top four is going to be coming up after we come back from a very quick break don't go anywhere ladies and gentlemen a lot more action getting ready for you see you soon <laughs> 